Hey, what's going on, Roleplays? It's the Bard here, and welcome back to the corner. And it's been far too long since I've had the chance to do one of these. Hello, love. Been a while. Far too long. Let's have some fun building this heartless mercenary and terrifying combatant. Sukuno is a character that squarely fits within the modern day, but it's easy to dial that back and stick him into a fantasy setting. I'm pretty excited for this build, because normally when I do one of these, it falls into a monk slash sorcerer combination. The parts we'll be using for this build, however, means that we're going to make use of fighter, rogue, and even a level of war cleric as well. Much of what makes the character work comes from your arcane trickster levels. Everything else, like combinations and special attacks, comes from things like your battle master techniques or your war domain. Not only should this please the gamers among you, but it should be a nice variation to the standard warrior character. Tavern Brawl is going to give you a lot of bonuses when it comes to getting into grapples, but it's also going to be useful when it comes to using things like improvised weapons, which we'll get to a little bit later. Sharpshooter will be really good for your cybernetic variation when it comes to doing things like zoning. And if you really want to, you can use Grappler for your commando variation. It's not a necessary feat, but it just will help to improve your attack rolls when you're trying to get your sneak attacks in as well. So before we get started, it should go without saying that your character is not actually going to be cybernetic, but, you know, because of the world we live in and how people complain, your character is not actually cybernetic. There, I said it. But that being said, you know, you can use things like masks or pendants or magical items and things like that to represent the cosmetic effects to get the character looking similar. And if it really means that much to you, you can swap out the term cybernetic and put in something else like magical. You know, whatever you need to get you through your game session. So cybernetic is your zoning variation. When it comes to D&D, &D, this means you're going to be using a lot of ranged attacks. You want to invest in things like darts. Darts are really good because they're considered to be ranged weapons and they're really cheap and they're really easy to get hold of. Combine these with sharpshooter and extra attack and you can really throw out a lot of damage, if you'll excuse the pun. Kano also has an empowered version of this through his EX knives, which you can also simulate by adding in your Warpriest ability. Your standard action attack plus extra attack from your fight levels, as well as a bonus action attack from Warpriest, allows you to throw out three darts, all with that sharpshooter bonus. Again, darts are cheap and plentiful, and you can stock up to 40 of them for the same amount of gold that it would cost you to buy one dagger. They also have an excellent stat line, which is almost identical to a dagger anyway, so you still get the benefit of being able to perform things like sneak attack with them as well. Cybernetic has some insane eye laser attacks, and you can represent this through things like Firebolt, which you can get from your Archean Trickster levels. This cantrip is going to be great for anti-airing things, so if there are anything above you or if there's any flyers that you have to deal with, it's a strong option. It's also really good for any long-range opponents who are on the ground. As they make their approach, you can just pepper them with Firebolt until they get within a range of your dart attacks where you won't be at disadvantage with them. Something that doesn't get used a lot is things like Adventurer's Gear when it comes to Alchemist's Fire or Vials of Acid. People just aren't using them, and they could be using them. They're really effective when you combine them with some of the Battle Master techniques like Pushing Attack. Acid Vials and Alchemist Fire are considered to be improvised weapons, so Tavern Brawler allows you to keep your proficiency bonus when it comes to making attacks with them. When it comes to battle maneuvers, however, improvised or not, the weapon attack is still going to get additional damage from your superiority die. This is a great way to add additional damage to your consumable attacks. Things like Alchemist Fire and all do cost quite a bit of money, but that's not too much of a problem since you save so much by investing in darts instead of buying up loads of daggers. Creatures will invariably get past your zoning options, so Booming Blade is really good when they get into melee. If you hit them with your weapon attack as part of the cantrip, you get to add your superiority die on as well by using your battle maneuvers, since it's only dependent on making a weapon attack. If you're successful in getting your pushing attack to work, then the creature has to move towards you if it wants to continue its assault. That way, it's guaranteed to take the additional damage from Booming Blade. A brief shot in the video sequence allows you to see that Kano is infiltrating the Special Forces base using some kind of holographic technology. This is easily representable by the disguised self spell. Arcane Tricksters are experts when it comes to enchantments and illusions, and one of the best illusions you can get at low level is the disguised self spell. So not only are you going to be really effective in combat with this variation, but you've also got some utility with it as well. What Cutthroat lacks in complexity, it makes up for inconsistency. 
Most of your baseline melee is going to come out of Cutthroat. There really isn't a lot to say about it, but there are a few little techniques that you want to consider when you're going in toe to toe against someone. Cutthroat's got some really high damaging techniques, so your extra attack and the action surge, if you have the opportunity to use it, are going to allow you to kick out an awful lot of damage. Also, positioning is everything, so make sure you're in a good place where you can get an advantage and thus use your sneak attack ability as well. Cutthroat only has two special maneuvers within the variation, but they cover your melee needs. The first special move is Blade Slice, and this can easily be represented by your sneak attack. Whenever the opportunity presents itself, just make sure to take the advantage and get that extra sneak attack damage. Blade Slice, however, does have some unique properties. You can actually go ahead and use your battle maneuvers with it. So if you've got something like Trip Attack or Pushing Attack, then one of those is a really good way of A, adding extra damage, and B, being able to put some space between you and your opponent. Your second and probably most important thing is your Power Up. Divine Favor is a great way to get additional damage on all your attacks. It's a spell that actually affects you and not a weapon that you're carrying, so it works with any kind of weapon you use. So regardless of whether you're going at it barehanded, or if you're going at it with knives, or any kind of ranged attack, doesn't really matter. You're going to get those bonuses added on. Divine Favor also has the benefit of having a bonus action cast, meaning you can make your full attack, and then, once you've got your two attacks, go for your action surge as well and any subsequent attacks will also have the additional d4 damage from your divine favor. Whilst d4 damage might not seem like very much, it really does start to rack up after a while. When you have multiple attacks, when you're getting to use action surges, when you also have the opportunity to use your war priest ability for an extra bonus attack, just look at the numbers you're working with. Just by adding in that extra d4, it's allowing you more consistency over each round. This spell lasts up to a minute as well, and it's in everyone's best interest to deal with you quickly. If they can't break your concentration, then all of your attacks are going to get that extra damage. And that's not to mention the fact that you might get attacks of opportunity, a mage in your party might give you haste for an extra attack, if you have another battle master using their commander strike, and any other amount of things that could possibly get you an extra action or another way of attacking your target. Commando is a grapple variation, and when it comes to grapple, it's always underrated. Choke is one of the main maneuvers for Commando, it allows you to instantly get into a grapple after an unarmed attack. The great way to do that is through combinations, so things like Tavern Brawler help to set that up really easily. By making your attack, you can take a bonus action then to get into the grapple if you're successful. The next step up from Choke is Strangle, a bit of an odd name for this one because it actually involves a knife attack. If you actually went for the grappler feat, then you're going to have advantage on anything that you grapple. Because you're using finesse weapons when you're grappling, you'll be able to then use your sneak attack as well. A sneak attack only requires that the weapon have the finesse property, so regardless of whether you're using strength or dexterity, just pick the best one that applies and go ahead and make your attack with that. However, even if your strength score isn't amazing, you can still get a pretty effective grapple. If you look at the rogue, they get expertise, and they get expertise in two skills of their choice, giving them double proficiency. Now when you consider the fact that a grapple is based on an athletics role, you can have double proficiency in your athletics, meaning you're going to have a really good chance of getting that grapple on and getting it to stick. Commander also offers up reversals, so being able to use the repost technique is going to get you really effective counterattacks. It's a strong use of your reaction which you would otherwise rarely get to use. It's also an attack that gets additional damage due to superiority dice from your Battlemaster techniques. It's also something that will come up a lot more often than you expect, so make sure that you're taking full advantage and trying to get your grappled opponent to the floor where they'll become prone, and that's when you can really start taking advantage of it. When grappling, you still want to get the best advantage you can, so by using expertise with the shove ability, you're going to be able to get them to the floor that much easier. Creatures that are on the floor have disadvantage, and anything with disadvantage means it won't be attacking you as effectively. Anything that can't attack you as effectively is going to miss more often, allowing you to use your repost. And if you repost, you can use your sneak attack because you're going to have a dagger or some other finesse weapon in your other hand. You never want to use the pin part of the grappler technique, because when both creatures are restrained due to the pin, then attack rolls against them have advantage, but attack rolls that the restrained creature mates have disadvantage. So you never ever get a bonus, and your opponent never ever gets a bonus. 
you want to remain grappling on top of a creature that is prone. In this respect, you continually have advantage and they continually have disadvantage. You can continue to sneak attack them at your leisure. If they do decide to attack you back, you always have the opportunity to repost because they're likely to miss you due to disadvantage. Also, a grappled creature can't stand up because it has no movement speed. Therefore, it won't be able to break your grapple that way. It can't move away from you in order to do so. Most of the time, its only option is going to be to contest your grapple with athletics or acrobatics. It might not even have those proficiencies, but you will have double proficiency in them due to your expertise. As I've said before, almost nobody pays any attention to grapple. But once your character is in one, it can be a nightmare to get out, especially if you've got a character or another monster who specializes in that kind of attack. So that's some nice variation to the standard fighter rogue style of gameplay. It's competent in all areas when it comes to combat. It's also got that nice little bit of spice to back it up with the spells from your Arcane Trickster class. I had tons of fun making this and hopefully you guys had just as much fun watching it. If you did, be sure to like and comment and if you're not subscribed to the channel already, why not consider doing so? Tell me if you've had success with a similar kind of character in the past or if you would like to see more things like this in the future, be sure to comment on that as well down below. And with all that being said, I will see you guys next time at the gaming table.